How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Monitor Comics, the YouTube channel where we create comics and manga. If this is your first time checking out my YouTube channel, then I hope you can check out some of my other videos after you are finished watching this one. We have already covered a ton of cool comic making tutorials, including how to create cover art for your manga volumes, how to name the characters in your comic, and how to write engaging side characters. To celebrate hitting 50,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, I will be hosting my very first Q&A. In today's video, I will be answering some of the questions you have sent me over on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. If you are only interested in hearing me answer a specific question i've created timestamps for every question answered in this video i apologize in advance if i do not get to answer your question i had so many to choose from before that though i want to take a look back at what inspired the monitor comics youtube channel i created this youtube channel back in my sophomore year of university i never expected it to grow into what it has become today this youtube channel was born from a single idea i wanted to create a one-stop hub for aspiring comic artists mangaka and webtoon creators i wanted to create a space where anyone could come and learn how to make comics growing up i was inspired by youtube channels like White Manga, Saigami Project, Mark Crilly, The Rona Project, The Shoujo Guy, My Mangaka Life, and Jason Brubaker. These YouTube channels gave me a dream. They showed me that it was possible to create manga, even though I did not live in Japan. As I got older though, these channels grew as well. They began to expand into other types of YouTube content, or they retired from creating manga tutorials altogether. The point of making this YouTube channel was to metaphorically give back to those YouTubers who paved the way for me. I wanted to do my part and help pave the way for future generations of comic, manga, and webtoon artists. If you have been around since the beginning, you could tell that I had a lot to learn about video editing, creating thumbnails, speaking intelligently, and promoting my work. I can't thank you all enough for giving me a chance and helping me build this channel into what it is today. I am always amazed by how positive and supportive our community is. If you take a look at any of the comment sections on this channel, you will find so many like-minded storytellers who want to help others grow into strong writers and artists i look forward to creating even more amazing content for you all in the future now let's answer some questions question one comes from evl4c and harrison letman on instagram they ask how old are you and when did you start drawing i am currently 22 years old i was born on february 12 2000 i started drawing when i was a young kid on screen you can actually see my very first drawing that my parents kept question two comes from sophie ray one on instagram they ask where are you from i was born in ventura county california but i was raised in philadelphia pa for my entire life question three comes from magic art on instagram they ask what is your go-to snack when drawing i am a huge fan of the lay's kettle chips that are jalapeno flavor question four comes from johnny eight and riz the writer on instagram they ask how did you start making manga i had older friends that were into anime and manga and they helped me get into it i think i really liked the story and the artwork and i wanted to try making one myself i started drawing comics back in elementary school i remember i would take printer paper and trace over the pages of bleach early on this helped me understand how to lay out comic panels and how to create stories. I started out creating fan comics and manga series that I liked. I would create original characters and put them in the worlds of Naruto, Dragon Ball, and Bleach. Question 5 comes from Sahani Sharma 5 on Instagram. They ask, can you show your very first comic? Unfortunately, I don't have the comics that I created as an elementary school kid on printer paper because my family and I had to move several times throughout my life, but I do still have the very first comic that I posted online. This web manga series was called From Me Never to You and was posted on a website called The Duck Web Comics. I can leave a link to this manga down in the description below. The story was pretty much about four teenage boys who all had a crush on the same girl. I never had the heart to take this project down because I like to see how far I've come as a manga artist. Question 6 comes from Green Saint on YouTube. They ask, when did you start to take drawing seriously? Around the time that I posted this first webcomic online, so around 14 years old when I was a freshman in high school. Two years later, I would create Second Serving, the summer manga one-shot that I used in Saturday AM issue 106. Question 7 comes from Young Wavy the Artist on Twitter. They ask, out of all of your comic projects, how many comic pages have you created? The short answer is over 300 pages. The first manga that I uploaded online from me never to you chapter one had 45 pages chapter two had 22 pages chapter three had 19 pages and chapter four had 20 pages so in total 106 pages the next project that I worked on was a shonen one shot tentatively titled knights and dragons it had 43 pages after that I worked on a project called pine and nutmeg and it had 43 storyboarded pages I worked on two other one shots at the time one called homeless god and the other one called trials for humanity but for some reason I can't find any photos of them the next big project that I tried to work on was called welcome the hill town this was a short gag series with five chapters with six pages each, so 30 pages total. I've rebooted this series several times, one in the form of a four coma and the other in the form of another one-shot storyboard. At some point, I did enter Metabang's storyboard to ink competition and I created the three-page manuscript. Then I made my 15-page summer manga one-shot second serving for Saturday AM issue 106. After that, while I was in college, I made a one-page comic strip for
for a magazine called Search. I also created a 12-page one-shot called Gender Vignettes that I submitted and won two awards for. I also created an eight-page one-shot called Her World in Colors as an independent study project at my university. Now I am working on the ongoing manga series Change the World for Saturday AM. Chapter 1 had 20 pages, Chapter 2 had 13 pages, Chapter 3 had 14 pages, and the Christmas special had 7 pages. I am currently in the process of rebooting this project because I had created it when I was a senior in university and working a part-time job. Now that I have more time, I can greatly improve the writing and artwork, so please keep an eye out for the re-release of Chapter 1 coming soon. Question 8 comes from Chris Blue on Instagram. They ask, for some reason I feel like I don't have the drive or the passion for art. How do I keep my fire alive? At the end of the day, comics and manga aren't for everyone. If you're fighting to keep your passion alive, maybe this isn't the field for you. Creating comics, manga, and webtoons takes a lot of work and discipline. Try to remember why you want to do this in the first place. This should be a fun process, so take breaks when needed. At the end of the day, the only one stopping you from reaching your full potential is yourself. Try to surround yourself with other creative artists. They will help you hold yourself accountable. Take the time to watch or read something new to inspire new ideas. Question 9 comes from Jello Studios on Instagram. They ask, how long does it take you to make one page of manga? Usually it takes me around 6 hours on average to make a fully inked page. So if I am working really hard and under a deadline, I can finish 2 comic pages per day. Question 10 comes from Tasimba Makami on YouTube. They ask, how can I find time to manage life and make comics and art? I want to pair this question with a similar one from Young Wavy the Artist on Twitter. They ask, how do you balance working a 9 to 5 as well as creating consistent YouTube videos and working on comics? The short answer is you don't. In life, there are 3 things you have to make time for. The first thing is a job or education. This will allow you to make money and survive. The second thing is social interaction. Making time for friends and family is incredibly important for your mental health. The third thing is passions and hobbies. Some people play video games to unwind, others go to the gym and exercise, and some make comics and manga. The harsh reality is, it's really hard to have all three of these things at the same time. Many people can usually focus on two and have to put aside the third. For example, while I was in college, I spent most of my time studying, doing homework, and doing extracurricular activities. In my free time, I wanted to make time for my friends because we only had four years together. As a result, I had far less time to focus on my art, YouTube channel, and published manga. The secret is you have to create time. I would go to bed late at like 1am and set an alarm to wake up at 6am. I would use this time to work on my comic or YouTube videos before I had to go to sleep or go to class. If I had an hour or longer gap between classes, I would use that time to also work on my videos and comics. Sometimes I'd have to skip out on a Friday night party because I had a deadline that I needed to hit. If something is important to you, you can create time for it. In terms of working a 9 to 5, the majority of your time and energy is going to be wasted on your job. When you get home, you're going to want to make time to go hang out with your friends, go to the gym, relax, take a nap, and then by that time, you're ready to start the next day. While I was in college, I knew that this is exactly what I didn't want to be doing. I worked my hardest to grow this YouTube channel into what it is today so I wouldn't have to rely on a 9 to 5 job. I'm doing my best to make my 9 to 5 my passion and my hobby. I know that can't be the case for everyone, so my best advice for people struggling to make time for their passions while working a 9 to 5 job is to create more time for yourself if you can. Keep tabs of how you're spending your free time. I personally gave up on playing video games years ago to make more time for comics and YouTube. Question 11 comes from Ethan Morrill on YouTube and Sophie Ray one on Instagram. They asked, what is your motivation for creating manga? Growing up, I was always mesmerized by the fantastical worlds in cartoons and anime. It was like an escape from reality where anything was possible. I wanted to create that feeling for other people. I always want my readers to take away something from reading my work. My current project, Change the World, is for all of the artists who were told that they couldn't make a career out of art when they were younger. It's for all the kids who were told to become a doctor, lawyer, or engineer instead of an artist. I want my work to feel like an escape from reality where the reader could be friends of the characters and go on adventures with them. Question 12 also comes from Tasima Makami on YouTube. They ask, how good do I have to be to make my very first manga? The short answer is you are never going to feel ready to create it. Like Peter Parker told Miles Morales, it's a leap of faith. It doesn't matter how good you get at drawing characters, perspective, backgrounds, or action scenes, you will never have a moment where you feel 100% prepared. My best advice is to just take the leap of faith and create something. The only way to get better at drawing comics, manga, and webtoons is to draw comics, manga, and webtoons. Question 13 comes from TXZ Official on Instagram. They ask, what has been your favorite mangaka art style to study? Right now, I've been having a lot of fun studying the works of Pochi, Kentaro Yabuki, and Minori Inaba. Question 14 comes from Extra Manga on YouTube. They ask, I like your unique art style. Do you have anyone who inspired it? Thank you. Some of my biggest art inspirations for manga include Shun Saeki, the artist of Shokugeki no Soma, Kimitaki Yoshioka, the artist of Grand Blue, and Boichi, the artist of Dr. Stone. Question 15 comes from Diego Mexico on YouTube. They ask, what are your biggest inspirations? I'm a huge fan of VTuber artists like Ninome Inanis, Nami-kun, and Orobo. Question 16 comes from Devin Whitlock on YouTube. They ask, what are your favorite works that you return 
return to again and again. I want to preface that my top three favorite anime and manga are not the top three best anime and manga that I've seen or read. Right now, my top three favorite anime are Haikyuu, Kaguya-sama Love is War, and Devil Man Cry Baby. My top three favorite manga right now are Shingeki no Kyojin, Kamisama no Itori, and To Love Rue. Question 17 comes from Them Moon Studio on YouTube. They ask, what is your favorite genre of manga to read? What genre do you draw most of your inspiration from? I am a huge fan of slice of life manga. I try to include slice of life elements in all of my comics and manga projects. Some of my favorite slice of life titles include the quintessential quintuplets, school rumble, and my teen romantic comedy snafu. Question 18 comes from flow plus one on Instagram. They ask, how do you work on a comic without getting burned out or giving up on it completely? Like I said earlier, I'm a big believer in taking breaks. Sometimes you have to step away from your work and come back to it with fresh eyes. However, you need to remember that being a comic artist, manga artist, or webtoon artist requires discipline. There are going to be days where you don't feel like working and you're going to have to force yourself to work. This is especially true if you are published and you have deadlines to hit. For the second part of this question, I highly recommend you watch my How to Stick with One Comic or Manga Idea video after you are finished watching this one. Question 19 comes from Mad Joker Artist on Instagram. They ask, what are your thoughts on script writing versus outlining your story? I recommend you use both for your projects. Outlines are great for giving you a broad idea of how everything plays out in your story. They are also amazing tools for organizing your story arcs and overall plot structure. They are also super easy to edit and revise. Scripts are great for fleshing out your pages before you start drawing them. If you are working with an editor, you might be asked to show a script before you start storyboarding so they can tell you which scenes or dialogue need to be changed. Question 20 comes from Chip Draws on Instagram. They ask, do you think it is a good idea to do more than one story, such as a one shot or another long story? In short, no, I don't think that's a good idea. If you want to make many one shots, then by all means do that. Just don't flip flop between projects. If you work on two projects at the same time, your attention will be split. This will result in a lower quality product. Your goal should be to actually finish a project, not work on multiple and quit halfway through. So if you want to work on a long story, try and commit to it for as long as you can. Question 21 comes from Nub New Big Boy on YouTube. They ask, how can I focus on one thing at a time while making manga instead of focusing on many things at once? Making comics and manga is a process. The basic process is the brainstorm, outline, script, storyboard, ink, color, publish, and promote. Instead of focusing on introducing hundreds of side characters, focus on a few main characters. Don't overthink your entire story. Focus on individual story arcs and take it one chapter at a time. You don't need to have everything planned out right away. You should have a rough outline of your story's beginning, middle, and end so you can fill in the blanks and make changes as needed. Question 22 comes from Black Toby on Instagram. They ask, how do I publish my comic? I highly recommend you check out my how to traditionally publish or self-publish your comic or manga video after you're finished watching this one. Question 23 comes from Chaos on Earth on Twitter. They ask, should you go through a publisher when doing comics or can you self-publish? Both traditional publishing and self-publishing are viable routes for aspiring comic artists. The main difference is with self-publishing, you have to do everything alone versus traditional publishing where you have access to your company's resources. For example, by working with Saturday AM, I have access to the editors, the CEO, graphic designers, all the artists at Saturday AM and our network. I've also been giving other opportunities through working with Saturday AM. For example, the main character from Change the World is in the mobile game Flick Solitaire. I had the opportunity to interview the CEO of Cryptozoic Entertainment at Saturday Con. I've also been a judge to help review entries for Summer of Manga and March Art Madness. Right now, Saturday AM has physical books being sold in stores like Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Waterstones, Right Stuff Anime, Books A Million, Book Depository, and so on. So in short, traditional publishers have their benefits, but they are much harder to get into. With self-publishing, you have to do everything yourself. Many self-published artists post their comics on platforms like webtoons tapas and manga plus creators i've also seen some indie comic artists use print on demand services to sell physical books to their fans who purchase them through amazon with self-publishing building a social media presence is everything you have to create your own fan base to support you in your work question 24 comes from synthwave monkey on twitter they ask what is generally the process for pitching your idea to have them published some publishers host contests but i usually end up missing them the short answer is don't miss the contest many publishers have something called a submission period it is the time of the year where publishers open up their applications for new talent. This can be in the form of portfolio reviews, pitch sessions, or contests. If you are interested in working with a specific publisher, you have to be keeping up with their social media accounts. They usually announce their events well in advance, giving you enough time to prepare. It is very rare for a publisher to sign someone who just DMs them online or sends them an email. Think about it, if you want to work for a specific company, then you should be a fan of that company. If you are a fan of that company, you will be following their social media accounts, keeping up 
up with their announcements of when they announce these events. Question 25 comes from Ofo Dude on YouTube. They ask, what is it like working for Saturday AM? Can you go into detail about participating in Summer of Manga? Working with Saturday AM has been great. We usually have meetings with our editor and publisher bi-weekly. Sometimes once a month, there is an all members meeting where we talk about upcoming events and announcements. It's been really cool to get to know some of the artists that I've looked up to for a while. All that is expected of us is to meet with our editor every once in a while and to hand our pages in on time. We can schedule additional meetings with our editor and publisher to discuss future ideas or revisions. I love being able to help out with events like March Art Madness, Summer of Manga, and Saturday Con. In terms of Summer of Manga, if you don't know what that is, it's Saturday AM submission period. Hundreds of applications are reviewed and about 10 are selected to create their own one shot that will appear in a Saturday AM issue. Summer of Manga 2022 just wrapped up in issue 151 with some amazing one shots. Please check those out because some of these talented artists will be joining the Saturday AM team in the future. Like I said earlier, I got my start by creating my one shot second serving for Saturday AM issue 106. I was told to provide an outline and a script for the one shot and some character designs. Once everything was revised and approved, I began making the pages. You only get about a month to work on 15 pages. Fortunately, my one shot did well enough that they asked me to join as an official creator. Question 26 comes from GZT Creations on Instagram. They ask, can you pick your favorite series from Saturday AM, PM, brunch, and afternoon? I am personally a fan of Apple Black, Underground, Grimheim, and Dream State. Question 27 comes from Moe Ultra on YouTube. They ask, does Saturday AM play a big part in the editorial process? Can they force you to change something about your story? And do you have to sign a contract with them? I did sign a creator contract with Saturday AM. All that it covered was that my series Change the World was published exclusively with Saturday AM. Every Saturday AM artist owns their own IP though. What this means is that I own all of the rights to change the world. If I were to ever leave Saturday AM, I will be able to take Change the World with me and post it on other platforms. Saturday AM does play a big part in the editorial process. Our CEO, Frederick L. Jones, helped me develop the general direction Change the World story would head in. He also helped me plan out the major antagonist and minor antagonist in the story and how the series will ultimately end. He even came up with the title Change the World. Our main editor, Austin Harvey, is a great resource for fleshing out our stories. He has a background in English education, so he has experience working with grammar and literature. He was also the writer for the Saturday AM series Better Off Ignorant. Editors are great for bouncing ideas off of and giving feedback. Remember, you don't have have to take your publisher or editor's advice, but you should consider it. Your publisher could force you to change something about your story if one, it doesn't make sense, two, it is offensive or problematic, or three, it doesn't benefit the progression of your story. Other than that though, you have a lot of freedom to tell the story that you want to tell. Question 28 comes from Bottle Gum on YouTube. They ask, how did you get into Saturday AM? Can someone who is European publish manga with Saturday AM? And would making one chapter every two weeks be fine? I got into Saturday AM by participating in the annual Summer of Manga one-shot competition. Saturday AM is the world's most diverse manga brand. We have artists from Nigeria, Canada, Hungary, Germany, the United States, and Japan. If you are European, then of course you can apply for Saturday AM's annual competitions. Saturday AM is for everyone. In terms of scheduling, each branch is different. Saturday AM releases a new issue about once or twice a month. Saturday PM releases a new issue every few months. Saturday Brunch releases a new issue a few times a year. And Saturday Afternoon is webcomic based, so we can create our own schedules. Question 29 comes from TXZ on YouTube. They ask, what do you hope to see in the future when it comes to future mangaka from America? First, I want to see more diverse characters and stories. If you are not Japanese, your character should not have Japanese names or live in Japan. If you submit something like that to a non-Japanese publisher and they find out that you're not Japanese, there is a high chance that your work will be immediately rejected. As harsh as it sounds, that is something that an amateur would do. I also want to see a greater variety in genre. When I was reviewing Summer of Manga entries this year, there were so many stories with battle manga elements. When you see 50 applications with battle manga stories, it makes you not want to pick any of them at all. My best advice for sending in your application to Summer of Manga is to create something that stands out from everyone else. If we see 50 applications with the same textbook shown in manga and one with a mecha series, I'm going to pick the mecha series. Finally, question 30 comes from Kozen Q on Instagram. They ask, any updates on your VTuber model? Yes, so as some of you may know, I am in the process of having a VTuber model made. That is the main reason I've taken a break from live streaming on YouTube. Unfortunately, my VTuber mamas were booked up for an entire year, so my model will not be finished until August 2023. You heard that correctly, I have two VTuber mamas. My first mama, Matsushima Sensei, is in charge of designing my model and creating the official artwork. Her girlfriend, Mio Umahara Sensei, is my second mama. She is in charge of rigging and bringing my model to life. Matsushima Sensei is a well-known VTuber artist who is best known for designing Silver Veil from V Shoujo. Because of this, her schedule is very busy and booked
booked into the next year. As I mentioned before, my live streams will return in August 2023. Around that time, I will be looking to commission artists for live stream assets, custom YouTube emojis, and membership badges. With that being said, we are now at the end of our very first Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone who took the time to send me questions. I apologize again that I couldn't get to everyone's questions. A lot of the questions that I receive will be covered in upcoming YouTube videos, so look forward to that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below letting us know if any of these answers surprised you. As always, keep creating everyone. I will see you all in the next one. Hey Vsauce, Michael here. Where are your fingers?